my uh, good friend, uh, not only a coaching colleague, but a golfing colleague. Uh, Gary and I have played Augusta National more times than we can count with a couple of our friends, mine being Randall Stevenson, um, you know, a former an, an OU uh, alum and, and great supporter, great friend. I'll, I'll let you introduce your crew, uh, Gary. But uh, again, a, a great friend, a great coach, uh, Gary Patterson, former TCU head football coach forever out umpteen years, 20 some years. And uh, glad to have you with us, Gary. How you doing today? I know you just got off the golf course. Well, you know, I told you, I said, you know, it's, first rule is uh, got to sweat. Second rule is got to get a little active. Got a third rule is be able to talk to somebody and Fourth rule is play good golf. So, uh, yeah, it's, I've been doing it all week. You know, you gotta you gotta stay active. So it's I appreciate being on, Coach Stoops. I I do. Well, it's fun to have you, Gary. And uh, talk about our times playing Augusta National with our group. Well, obviously, uh, Matt Rose was the uh, the TCU person. Uh, for all that know, you know, the they set it up to where a couple weeks afterwards uh, they took the athletic director from both schools, the head coach. And they picked the guests, and then Randall and Matt uh, took us, and we played, uh, came in on Sunday, played the little nine you know, after that, and then played the next day and came home. So, uh, you know, just ended up being a great friendship, not just uh, about golf, but just about life. It was uh, really, really great to get to be around that group anytime we could. And to be honest with you, there was a lot of knowledge that I learned uh, from uh, a distance from Randall and Matt, you know, from the business side of uh I think one of them told us, and I think it was Randall said, you know, if you guys would all do, uh, you guys would all do uh, college football like the NFL does, where you all got together and just had one voice. He said, you'd even be worth a lot more money. And you're starting to see that uh, come into fruition now, uh, years later, uh, about all of this starting to go to where there's going to be one. Someday, I think there'll be one super conference. I, I could see us moving to a definitely. I think it's been said a lot. A, a pro models sort of on its way, isn't it, Gary? Well, yeah. You know, I think I think we're we're headed now. I think there's some um, there's some legislation out there. I think I saw an article on Florida State with uh, J.P. Morgan as far as them sponsoring them and just you know paying their their players basically becoming salary possibility. You know, the players being on salary. And by the way. If, you want to go to school, great, but it's just a different element of the whole situation. And so, uh, yeah, I think it's uh, it's definitely moved awfully fast in the last five years. I, I, I don't know about you, Bob, but I'm kind of glad that I'm kind of looking outside in right now, uh, not <laughs> having to be one of those guys that's having to try to figure it out. No, no doubt about it. We, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I'm glad I'm not in the middle of it right now. Talk about, uh, Gary, uh, here we are, season openers this week. Talk about how you were. I know for me, I was always the most anxious uh, for the first game. I'm not a nervous guy. It's not my nature. But I was always very anxious to play that first game to find out what your, what your unit, what your group's going to play like, what they're going to look like. How were you in those first games? Well, you were, Coach, Co- Coach Stoops, you were, Bob, you were that kind of guy. I think defensive guys are fixers. And so, you know, you kind of got to see what you have and you, you play against each other and practice so much. You don't really know what's what's reality. And so, yeah, you want to get to that first game, no matter how, what level of competition it is. You want to see how the guys warm up. You want to see how they handle Friday night meetings. Uh, you want to see, you know, what the maturity level of it all is and then how they handle the ball game. You know, you want to win it. Um, but, yeah, the, I was the same way. And, you know, the, the games that bothered me the most is, a little bit like uh, TCU's going into to where you have a new head coach, uh, really a whole different new staff. He uh, coach uh, Prime does there in Colorado, and you don't really know really what they're going to do offense or defensively, and you haven't seen any of their players on film. Uh, those are the ones that kind of bothered you the most. I, I was a little bit more of a worrier, probably, <laughs> but uh, uh, it, probably if I if I a couple more couple more players that probably helped me but it, there was years that I wasn't because we had really good teams uh, but yeah it's uh that first one is always a dilemma but it's it's fun you want to get it over with so you can start moving in the right direction one of the one of the most uneasy ones was 2005 
when I had just lost Jason White and a whole crew of guys, and I'm like, uh oh, I got a redshirt freshman here ready to play, and I got TCU coming to town. You came in here in 2005 and gave me one of our first losses here in 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 uh, in at OU. Well, we were fortunate, as you just said. You, I think you were young on the. You kind of had some injuries on the offensive line. You were young. You had a you had a young quarterback. Uh, you know, we had a veteran. We had a more of an older group that uh, had gone through the first losing season at TCU. So, spring ball was not well, was not a lot of fun. If you talk to the guys, in fact, mm-hmm. I had a player ask uh, Kelsey, my wife, uh, at the bowl game at the end of that season, and he he asked for all of them because I was up on stage and she was sitting back with him. Now, Mrs. P, do you really love Coach P? Because they they pretty much couldn't believe anybody would like me. Uh, at that time, because how tough uh, spring ball had been, and then fall camp had been, but they, it turned out to be great. And you, we were fortunate in that ball game. I think to, I think uh, I think your your star tailback also had a bad ankle. I mean, there were some things in that ball game that lended in our favor. So uh, you're being very nice, but it's uh, you know it was the right time for us. I think I said in my post game uh, press conference. Uh, if we played Oklahoma 10 times, they'd probably be at us nine, but uh, this just happened to be the one. So uh, I, I, I knew my place at that time. TCU obviously has grown since then. Absolutely. Barry, you got, I want to jump yeah, in Gary, with Gary. First time since you were a little boy in Kansas sometime in the 1960s that you're not associated with a football team come September. What's it like to be out of the game? How are you adjusting? Is it coming easy? Is it hard? What, how how are you adjusting? Well, I uh, it's it's obviously it's interesting. You know, Coach Stoops could probably talk about that. But uh, um, like I golf, you know, the creativity part of being on defense. I'm still writing music, so I'm 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 in the I'm in the studio right now with one song, and I've started on another. Uh, but yeah, it's 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 been different. Uh. I've been doing some consulting. I've helped a few programs. I really like the ones that have young head coaches, uh, young staffs, you know, where I can try to make a difference. Uh, but, you know, it's uh, in some ways it's it's nice not having to think about what I got to call for third and 10 on tonight at 11 o'clock when I'm thinking back over my game plan and you're playing a team like Colorado that's got a lot of unknowns to it. But uh, it's uh, it's been different. I You know, I'm trying to find a purpose, I think, Coach Deuce talked about, you know, he's doing the XFL, I think, of finding a purpose. I want to make the game better. And so I'm trying to find uh, how is it that I can do that and stay a part of it and and, and help solve some of the problems. But uh, really, to be honest with you, after all these years, it's it's nice to take care of my own family. I think Coach Stoops said to me this, too. You know, you get a chance to think about yourself and your own family. Because really, when you're a head coach or really any time assistant, it's always you got 125 kids on your team that are somebody else's sons or you know and so uh you're always you're always every minute you're always trying to make sure that you're solving all their problems so uh it's been a kind of a breath of fresh air but I miss all my players I think coach Deuce would probably tell you the thing that I probably miss most is the coaches you coached with yeah. and the players you played with and that's been really good for me because I've been able to get back in touch with uh, a lot of my former players that I hadn't had a chance to even last year, you know, staying as busy as I did when I went down for a, a season at Texas. So uh, it's good. I got to admit, uh, Gary, I'm so glad I don't have to see you in burnt orange anymore. <laughs> that was hard for me for all of last year. <laughs> you're, you're too good a friend. You're too good a buddy for me to be watching that. But uh, let's uh, talk about uh, – Talk about TCU. I know you're, you're good buddies uh, with Sonny Dykes, and and uh, isn't this going to be an interesting game with Colorado and Coach Prime and and uh, his whole philosophy on how he's rebuilt this? I I can't wait to see what it's going to turn out like. Well, obviously, you know, I want uh, TCU to do well, just like last year. You know, I had 26 seniors that we left that uh, end up having a magical year. They got hot at the right time, and uh, I think. Counting even guys that left, I think we had 11 or 12 guys that uh, got drafted or made NFL teams. So it's that's at least on the practice squad. So it's, you know, as you know, Coach, um, one of the coolest things ever is to see, to know that we helped in the development, that they got an opportunity to better their lives. And so 
that side of it with TCU, to see what TCU has become, not only for the university, but for the city and the state, obviously the national uh, uh, prominence that they, you know, they went to get opportunity to get to a national championship game uh, over the last 25 years. All the work is, is great to see something like that. You know, you, you and I would both be lying if you weren't a little, we weren't, we wouldn't say we weren't a little jealous that we hadn't been a part of it, but um, you know, you know me, I'm always honest about all those kind of things, but it's, you know, I think it's a, it's a interesting thing. It's a difference in philosophy, but I think it was, it was good. It was good for TCU uh, for that. And, uh, you know, I think the, the question now is how they go forward now that you've lost a lot of experience and now it's more of his signature, his, his, his stamp on the program, which is going to be fun for me to watch too, because in a lot of ways that becomes even a better thing. And so, you know, our whole goal was always to try to keep moving forward and to try to climb the ladder. Cause I think almost five, you count the big, big East, almost five conferences, you know, we were kind of a nomad from ni- 1998 when I came with coach Franchoni. And so uh, to have an opportunity to see that that coming to fruition, you know, where we were, we were close, but we didn't get into the playoffs in 2014 uh, to now get noted that we, maybe that was because that happened. And a lot of people felt like we should have that that helped and uh, you should have yeah get that next get that next vote that the next time we got there and and they did and so uh, you know I think that's the you know I love Fort Worth and I and I love TCU and it's one of those things where um, I want to make sure you know you wanted to make sure the city was better and the city's gotten better because the school's gotten better and then there's you know the the city's just blossoming just growing it's I think the third thirteenth largest city. Uh, in the country and, you know, people are moving every day. And I think a lot of that has to do with, I, I'd hope to think that we were a small part of making sure that all happened. And so uh, it's fun. I think that when I came to TCU, I think they had 4,000 applications for 1,500 students. And I think this last year ap- after the Rose Bowl in 2010, it went up to 23,000. And then I think it was around 42,000 for just wow. 2,000 students after the, after playing for the national championship. So uh that's just a good thing. I'm I'm proud to be a part of that uh, whole journey. I want you. I want Gary, uh, I want you two uh, guys Gary. to compare notes. On this screen are two coaches who have statues of themselves right outside the stadiums in which they coached. Now Bob got his a little bit after he finished coaching. Gary, you got yours while you were still the coach of the Horn Frogs. Neither one of you strike me as a guy that ever wanted you know a bunch of. Uh, turn your stadiums into uh, Roman cathedrals, but what do you, what, how was that feeling? Especially you, Gary, getting a statue up while you're still the coach trying to figure out how, how to beat Texas tech. Well, I would tell you, no, nobody would want to have, I, I, I said no a bunch of times. It was a guy by the name of Bill Parrish that actually had, had done it. He'd done the, uh, the other two statues that are up there also. And, um, you know, he went into a coma and actually came out of it. And he had two requests. One was to see all that finished. And another one was for his family request. And so I was, it was really hard finally to say no, uh, for a man. Cause about six months later he passed away. He was just a great man. And so, yeah, but it's, it's, uh, nobody wants that pressure. I can tell you that right now. I'm glad they put it on the basketball side that I didn't have to see it. But I will tell you one thing that what the, the positive I got out of it, I was able to thank, you know, 20 years into it, you know, or 15 years into it, I was able to thank all the players and all the alumni, all the boosters that helped us get to that point. A lot of times when that statue gets up, Bob and I are lucky uh, that, you know, something like that happened that people thought enough of us to do that. But, you know, it's, you got a chance to thank people. A lot of people there, you know, they're dead and gone. They never get an opportunity to say thank you. And so the, the big positive out of it was just getting an opportunity to say thank you to all the people that were part of the journey. And I think that's uh, not a lot of people get a chance to do that when you, when you get something like, when you get a statue, something like that, that's put up. But I would tell, probably tell you, and I don't think I can speak for coach Stoops, but it, you know, it, that statue was a lot more than just me. And so. Uh, very, very well said, Gary. I'm with you. It still feels weird. Uh, you know, it, it's odd to me. Uh, I'm with you about the, thanking the people, and none of us do it alone. You know, all the support staffs, the, 
you know, the uh, assistant coaches, the players, and, uh, you know, they're all a part of our journey and we wouldn't, have, you know, we wouldn't have done it without all of them and all their hard work and totally feel the same way. And uh, like I said, it seems odd to me. I'll, I'm still here in town and I'll, I'll drive by. And uh, my wife asked me, she goes, I know you went to practice and you went to, to the laundromat, which is by the statues. She goes, did you see your statue? I go, you know what? I forgot to look at it. <laughs> so I don't, when I go by it, I don't even look at it. It just, just doesn't seem, you know, it just seems odd. Well, who wants to look at themselves anyway, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, yeah, but it's, it's a neat, it's an incredible tribute to, to you as well. And uh, so you, you feel humbled and blessed by it, but, uh, but we know we didn't do it alone. Well, listen, Gary, I appreciate your time, uh, buddy. Now, I'm hoping Gary is going to come to our foundation golf tournament Friday, right the day before our uh, SMU game next week. And uh, I'm hoping. And uh, so hopefully Gary will be here. And I told Gary, if he comes, bring your guitar. He's going to sing a couple songs up there. And maybe we'll get Toby to join, Toby Keith to join in with you. You know, that'd be, that'd be an honor for me. I can promise you that. And please tell Toby hello. Uh, I got a song that's got a couple words about him in it, I think. So. <laughs> well, he'll enjoy hearing it. I know that. I was with him at Kevin Wilson's game uh, up in Tulsa last evening. So I'm hoping he's he's planning on being at our tournament so you'll get a chance to see him. Well, anytime you want me back, Coach Stoops, you know I'm always at your beck and call. So just let well, me listen, know if we're I gonna, can ever help you. We're going to have you back on. You're, you're one of our first, you and Kevin Wilson, our first guests on on our podcast right here well barry was always good to me he was always good to me also so you know i'm just uh you know it's always it's uh it's a lot easier when you look back and see all the good that everybody did uh through the years and it you know, like you said it, it's taken a lot of people to get to this point well listen appreciate you buddy and hello to kelsey for me all right hey and go get them we'll see thanks you to right. gary patterson and thanks bob uh to you and uh thanks to People for joining us with Bob Stoops and Gary Patterson and Kevin Wilson. Sellout Crowd will continue to bring you periodic conversations with Coach over the next few months. Follow and subscribe to selloutcrowd.com. We will see you soon.